It's not, hold on. It wants to advance, but not advance. My apologies. I'm not very good with it. Okay. Not a problem. I'm coming. You see that? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm doing it. Thank you. <laughs> What is SHIP? SHIP stands for the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, or in our state, it's called ICARE. Every state in the United States, including our territories, has what they call a SHIP program. We are funded by the Administration for Community Living, which is a federal entity, and to provide Medicare enrollment information and assistance to Medicare and um, their caregivers. SHIP here in the state of South Carolina is known as ICARE, Insurance Counseling Assistance Referrals for Elders. Everyone um, in their respective states has probably a different name for it, but nationally we are known as SHIP. So today we'll talk about Medicare do a little introduction, talk about original Medicare, Medicare Advantage plans, otherwise known as Medicare Part C, um, Medicare prescription drug plans, Medicare savings plans, and fraud. Throughout this presentation, you will see acronyms and I'll explain to you what they are. The federal government loves acronyms, but we're gonna make sure that we get through them all for you today. All right, Medicare. Medicare is administered by CMS, or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. To enroll in Medicare, you must through it, do it through the Social Security Administration or the Railroad Retirement Board. You cannot call 1-800-MEDICARE and enroll that way. It has to be through either one of those entities, depending on how you get your benefits. Now, Medicare. Everybody is not a title to Medicare. You only get Medicare in certain conditions in certain ways. It is a health insurance program for people mostly age 65 years or older, people with disabilities. Now that disability is through the Social Security Administration, meaning they deemed you disabled and you've been disabled for at least 24 months. People with end-stage renal disease are also eligible for Medicare. People with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease are eligible for Medicare as well. Currently, there are 976,497 beneficiaries enrolled in Medicare. That was as of 2020. That includes not just persons age 65 or over, but persons with disabilities as well. Now, when you reach the age of 65 and you are still working, if you are not receiving your social security benefits yet, you must enroll in Medicare on your own, at least part A. Part B can be delayed because you are still working. And there's one of those special acronyms, SCP. That means a special enrollment period. If you have more than 20 people where you are working and you are age 65 or over and you still continue to work, you can enroll at a later date with no penalty. You can enroll online and you must present evidence of coverage to avoid that penalty. That simply means that if you continue to work past the age of 65 and you are covered by your group insurance where you work and or it could be your spouse is working and you have reached the age of 65, but he or she is employed with more than 20 people there under that group policy, you can delay that enrollment penalty. But you must, must fill out a form when it's time for you to enroll in Medicare Part B to avoid that penalty. And we put that in bold, not receiving social security benefits. So if you aren't receiving it, then you must do it yourself. If you are receiving social security benefits at that time, then social security system already knows that you're eligible and they will send you your Medicare card in the mail. Now Medicare has four enrollment periods the initial, the general, the open, and the special. So let's talk about each one of those separately. And they can be confusing. So this is where the maze starts, okay? Automatic enrollment part A and part B. As I just mentioned, if you are getting your benefits from Social Security or the Railroad Retirement Board, 
then you will automatically be enrolled in Part A and Part B. Your card will come to you in the mail and it will have both parts on there. It's up to you whether or not you want to keep them, both ones, or you want to decline it. But a letter will come with the card, usually three months before you reach that 65th birthday. Or if you are disabled and you've been disabled at least 24 months on that 25th month of disability benefits, you'll be entitled to Medicare as well. Now, initial enrollment period. This is that three months before your 65th birthday, the month of your 65th birthday, and three months after your 65th birthday. You have seven months in order to enroll in Medicare. Some people haven't decided if they want to stop working at 65 or they want to continue, they have spouses insurance. So this gives you the opportunity to figure those things out before your 61st birthday rolls around or even after it does. So it says to late penalty enrollment is 10% per year. That means that if you decide when your 65th birthday rolls around and you haven't decided to take Medicare, you decide at a later date, but you don't have a special enrollment period to do so, you will be charged 10% for every year you delay enrollment until you get it. And that 10% is based on what the national average is for Medicare Part B as in boy. Right now it's 148.50 that you pay monthly for Part B. So they take 10% of that if that were to occur this year. So every year beyond that, 10% of 148.50, I'd just say 150, give or take, it's about $15. So that's a $15 on top of that. So that $15 rolls from one year to the next year. And for every year, it's gonna go up. And that penalty does not go away if you incurred it when you were at age 65. Now, if you were under 65 and you incurred a penalty, then that penalty will go away once you reach the age of 65. COBRA. COBRA, a lot of people get when they stop working um, because sometimes they have other family members on it. They wanna keep their prescription benefit. Whatever the situation may be, just know that COBRA is not considered creditable coverage for Medicare. So if you opt to keep your COBRA instead of enrolling in Medicare, when you have that opportunity to do so, then you're going to um, incur a late penalty fee. Now we have other enrollment periods. I mentioned general. We are currently in the general enrollment period. That actually ends tomorrow. So that means from January 1 through March 31st every year, you can enroll in Medicare Part B if you skipped over it to tack it on to what you currently have, but your coverage does not begin until July 1. That's when that, you normally when that penalty is in play, when you go and um, have to enroll in January. Then we have open enrollment. For those that are currently in Medicare, they know about the open enrollment period, October 15th through December 7th yearly, with the effective date of January 1. This allows individuals to enroll in either a Medicare Advantage plan, get out of an Advantage plan, get into a new one, get a new prescription benefit, get out of a prescription benefit, whatever it is you may want to do, that is the time that you need to do it. Up to December 7th, there, unless there's a national disaster that occurs in our state or around the country, normally that date is not extended. It is a drop dead date of December 7th. And then they have the MA plan, um, open enrollment. We are currently in that as well. So if individuals enrolled in a Medicare Advantage product in December and it started in January and they don't like it, they wanna to go to something else or they wanna go back to traditional Medicare, this is the time to do so. That drop dead date is tomorrow, the 31st. You have up until midnight, well, 11.59 and then you can get out of that play. And as long as you do it by that date. Otherwise, unfortunately, you will um, have to remain in that plan until the end of the year. And then special enrollment, as I already mentioned, if you're still working, a spouse is still working, you move in or out of a service area, there's some type of fraud going on that we can prove, and then those are, that's an opportunity for you to get in and out of something that you're currently in as well. And it's they're subject to, um, it's a case by case 
basis. So, oop, uh-oh, I clicked something, I shouldn't have clicked. I'm coming. Now I can see it, um, all right. All right, there, I'm back. South Carolina State employees. If you are a South Carolina State employee, if you're a retiree and you're covered by the current state health plan or savings plan become, before you become eligible for Medicare, PIBA, which is our entity that does our insurance, will send you your information. It will send you a letter usually 31 days prior to you turning 65 or becoming eligible to, for Medicare to let you know that they're automatically switching you over to a Medicare supplemental plan. And you'll want to make sure that you get that letter, keep that letter because that is going to be your extra insurance. That simply means people who have, are South Carolina State retirees don't necessarily need any of these other products that we're discussing today. You just need to know the general information because Medicare is going to be primary and then your state retiree plan will be your secondary or your supplement to your Medicare. Now let's talk about Medicare. Medicare has four parts, A, B, C, and D. And hopefully not before I retire, they won't enter an E. But these are the parts that we currently have now. Part A covers your inpatient hospital, your skilled nursing facility, your home health, and your hospice care. So let's talk about what that is. Now, Part A is generally free for those individuals that work. They have to have 40 quarters, which is equivalent to 10 years built into the Social Security system. Only Social Security can tell you if you have met those quarters and if you have not, how much you're going to have to pay. So as you see, if you have between 30 and 39 quarters, currently this year, 2021, your premium for Part A is $259 a month. That's in addition to part B. For those who have less than 29 quarters, the premium for part A is $471 a month. But as I mentioned, if you have the 40 quarters or more, your premium for part A is zero. You have no premium. And the third bullet talks about part A and how it's based on benefit periods. A benefit period, that simply means when you're going into the hospital or going into any facility as an inpatient, it is the first day of service and it ends after having been out of the hospital or skilled nursing facility for at least 60 consecutive days. And I'll show you what that looks like on the next couple of slides. Okay. Here we go, part A covers the semi-private room and board, general nursing supplies and services. So if you go into the hospital, let's say it's at the beginning of January, and of course with COVID going on, that very well may be. You were in the hospital for at least three or four days. If you're in the hospital at least three days, you're considered an inpatient. You're required to pay that deductible. Currently it is $1,484 for the first 60 days. So that simply means that you could be actually hospitalized for a whole 60 days, come out of the hospital and potentially only have to pay that 1484. Not saying that that would be any, all of it, but potentially that may be it, just depending on what you have done. Now, if you go in the hospital and this is how a benefit period works, you go in for the first, let's say seven days, you get sick, after you come out of the hospital, you get sick and go back in 30 days after being at home. Well, you are not required to pay that deductible again. You are still within your benefit period. But if you come out and you stay home for four months and get sick again, could be the same illness or something different and go back in for another three day stay, you are required to pay that deductible again. So you could potentially pay that deductible several times throughout the year, just depending on what goes on with you. And then you see the other days, if you're in the hospital on the 61st day through the 90th day, the 91st through 150, and anything beyond 150 days at any given time, 
you are responsible, meaning the beneficiary is responsible for all costs. Medicare pays nothing. And then we'll jump down to the skilled nursing care. That is a skilled nursing facility or simply rehab. It is not your basic nursing home where the loved ones normally do not come home. It is to go in for rehabilitative services and hopefully go home thereafter. So the first 20 days are free. Days 21 through 100, you see there's a cost of $185.50 a day. And then all costs beyond 100 days are on the beneficiary. Now we mentioned the skilled nursing care. All people with Medicare are covered if they meet these conditions. You have part A and have days left in your benefit period. You have to have a qualifying hospital stay, at least three days is what they consider a qualifying hospital stay. And you need skilled care given by or direct under supervision of skilled nursing or therapy staff. Just as I mentioned, rehab, that's what skilled nursing is. Home health is also afforded to you under Part A. You pay no cost for home health care. Has to be pres prescribed by your physician and you have to be homebound. So you could leave from that skilled nursing facility, still need some more rehabilitative services to get up and moving and have home health and it costs you nothing. So you can go from the hospital to skilled to home and still get all those coverages under Part A. And then hospice care that is covered under, pay, under Part A as well. They offer pain relief and supportive services. They no longer will do your daily maintenance meds, none of the daily maintenance care. This is for individuals who have been diagnosed with, from a physician with six months or less to live. So you have to have a terminal illness in order to get under hospice. And at any time that you're under hospice, you can tell them you no longer want it and you go back to traditional Medicare or the way that you had it under an Advantage plan. Medicare pays 100% for hospice care. Now part B, these are the costs for 2021. Most, most people will pay $148.50. That's taken out of a social security check. If you're receiving one, that's how it's paid. If you're not receiving one at that time, and you opted to have your Part B benefits, you have to pay that yourself. The deductible is $203. And as you see on the third bullet, for those that make incomes greater than $88,000 a year, then it starts at $207.90. And Social Security <coughs> will deem whether or not you're eligible or how much you will pay for your Part B premium. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I promise it's not COVID. I had my vaccine. <coughs> Just a dry throat. Um, Part B services. You have your doctor services, durable medical equipment. <coughs> Ambulance services, clinical labs, <coughs> excuse me, preventative services and outpatient mental health. <clears throat> so preventative services, there's a welcome to Medicare preventative a benefit that you get within <clears throat> 12 months of Medicare enrollment. Then you have your yearly wellness visits that Medicare affords you the opportunity to get as well. <clears throat> Then Medicare Part C. This is probably what everybody's been seeing on commercials the last couple months. Medicare Part C, if you've seen it with, with um, some of the actors, some of the football players, they talk about um, benefits, excuse me, that you may be able to get that you don't normally get under Medicare, traditional Medicare. Those may be um, dental benefits, vision benefits, hearing benefits. That's what they 
tell you that you're eligible to get. And yes, most people are eligible for Medicare Part C. But when you're looking at Medicare Part C, which is a, <coughs> another entity of Medicare, then <clears throat> it takes Medicare Part A, Part B, and usually the D, prescription benefit, and they merge them together. <clears throat> As you can see, <clears throat> there's no cost for some of them. And we have them all going all the way up for the monthly premium to $130 a month. Most people like these because they're set co-pays and deductibles, but it does not coordinate with the Medigap or Medicare supplement. You can always review your Medicare options with your providers before joining. And we encourage that highly to make sure that you don't enroll in one of these products. And then they do not work at your doctor's office. And I bolded that to say plans are contracted by the federal government. So yes, they have to go through Medicare in order to serve Medicare beneficiaries, but they are individual insurance companies. Who can join in them? You must be enrolled in Medicare Part A and Part B. You can't just have one part, you have to have both parts. You have to live in the plan service area and effective January 1 of this year, persons with end-stage renal disease now can join a Medicare Advantage plan. At one time, they were not allowed to join Advantage plans because of the end-stage renal disease, but they now have the opportunity to do so. Medicare Part D. This part came into effect in 2006. This is where Medicare had um, joined with private plans or contracted with private plans to offer prescription benefits. People that have either Part A or Part B can join a Part D plan, <coughs> but you must live in a service area. can't live outside of the US or be incarcerated. Actually, if you unfortunately are incarcerated, you lose your Medicare benefits anyway, and then will incur a penalty when you get ready to take them again. But anybody can have a Medicare Part D, the drug prescription plan. And the time to enroll in those or make changes is during that open enrollment, which starts October 15th. Part D enrollment options, you can have original Medicare and a PDP, which is considered a prescription drug plan. I have Medicare Advantage plan and a PDP. So that's an Advantage plan that has prescriptions built into it, a combination. And then you have a Medicare Advantage plan with the separate PDP is not an option. There are some Advantage plans that do not offer prescription drugs and you can't take a prescription drug plan and attach it to a Medicare Advantage plan to make it whole. You have to join one that's a combination plan. But those are the ways that you can get your prescription drug benefit if you need to enroll in a prescription drug plan. <clears throat> now, it's not on this slide, but prescription drug plans also have a late enrollment penalty. So if you were afforded the opportunity to enroll in a prescription drug plan when you were first eligible for one and did not join one when they first gave you the opportunity, you will incur a penalty with that as well. And the penalty is not as, as steep. It is based on the national average of a prescription drug plan, which currently is about $33. And it's only 1% of the national average. So that's about 33 cents which doesn't seem like a lot of money, but if you compound it by the number of years and months, because it goes on monthly rather than yearly, it can be a steep penalty for you to pay. We've seen individuals that have gotten into, the, into Medicare, never took out a prescription drug plan because they were never on prescriptions at the time, which in, in a sense makes sense, but now that they're on 
several prescriptions, they have no way of paying for it. Because now when they've joined one, it becomes a little bit more costly than they actually thought it was going to be. So it, even if you're not on any prescription drugs, we encourage individuals to at least take part in the least expensive drug plan if they can, so that when, when and if they ever have to go on to prescriptions, they have something already in place. With that being said, there may be individuals that are eligible for what we call the low income subsidy. And this is monies that's provided by the federal government to pay for a Part D premium, the deductibles and the coinsurance. And the current figures that you see on the screen are for 2021. So income and resources are what's counted. If in fact you're eligible for the low income subsidy and you were penalized for not taking a prescription drug plan when you were first afforded the opportunity to do so, if you're eligible for LIS, it may potentially wipe that penalty out. So that may help individuals that you may know as well. Dual eligible. We do have those individuals in our state that are both eligible for Medicare and because of income and resources, they're eligible for Medicaid. I know that people have talked about it before and they don't think that people can have both. That's not the case. Medicaid is different in every state though. If you come from one state and had Medicaid and moved to our state, you may not necessarily qualify depending on your income and resources. So it's different from state to state. But if you're here in South Carolina, based on income and resources, you can have both the Medicare and Medicaid. So a Medicare savings program is someone who has both the Medicare and Medicaid. They're broken down into three categories. You have the qualified Medicare beneficiary. That individual not only has all of the Medicaid benefits that they're afforded, they also get their Medicare Part B premium paid for them. So that 148.50 is paid by the state on their behalf. The other two categories are for individuals whose incomes are higher, they will not receive the full benefits of Medicaid. However, they will get their Part B premium paid by the state for them. So those are only two categories. And as you go up the income, as you go up a level, the income limits go up as well. And as I put the website, the South Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, our Medicaid agency is the agency to find out more information and or fill out an application. You can also contact our office or your local um, agency in order to apply for that benefit as well. Now, people have um, Medigap policies or Medicare supplement, same thing, different word, but they mean the exact same thing. They did some changes to Medigap policies back in 2020. Two plans went away. Plans, um, part, plan C and a plan F are no longer sold for newly Medicare beneficiaries. So if you were new to Medicare this year, if you were new to Medicare as of January 1, 2020, last year, then you were not able and are not able to purchase plan C or F. However, if you are, if you are not new to Medicare, meaning you were already on Medicare prior to 2020, even if you only had part A because you were still working, or what have you, then you still have the opportunity to purchase plan C or F if you want to. But right now, those unfortunately are no longer available because the federal government has decided that Medigap policies can no longer pay the part B deductible, that $203 that we talked of, that now is the beneficiary's responsibility. Now I can never stop talking about with talking about Medicare without talking about fraud. That is the other arm that we have within our agency, the Senior Medicare Patrol. And that's basically all things Medicare fraud. I put the new Medicare card on here because this rolled out a couple years ago. However, they have actually seen, seen now that people are calling individuals now, especially with the um, 
vaccine, the COVID vaccine that has come out or when the COVID shots, all those things were coming into play. People were still calling Medicare beneficiaries and telling them that they can get a new Medicare card. All the new Medicare cards were rolled out back in 2018, 2019. Those were out. If you're new to Medicare, this is what your Medicare card will look like. If you know ones from um, years ago, they had your social security number on them. And mm -hmm. the reason why they phased those out is because of the fraud that had been going on. You lose your Medicare card and your social security numbers on there, then people have access to your social security. And that was the one of the reasons why they put the identifying numbers on them going forward. So uh, make sure that you, this is the card that you get. There is not going to be a hard plastic card. That's what they call people and tell them, if you send us $20, we'll send you a hard plastic card. That is not the case. It is still a paper card. You can laminate it if you want to. Um, don't carry it with you unless you know you're going somewhere uh, to the doctor's office or, um, and now that it has a de-identifying number, you may be able to still carry it with you and it'd be okay, but please don't give out that Medicare number to anyone. We always tell beneficiaries that Medicare is not going to call you. I don't know how, if you've ever called a federal government place other than our agency, but your national numbers, you're gonna be on hold for a little while. So Medicare is not calling you. Social Security is not calling you. So if you know a beneficiary, make that known that, that you will not receive phone calls from any of those entities unless they call this, you, the beneficiary called first and left a voicemail message for a return call. Otherwise, no one is gonna call them. So if that happens, more than likely it is a scam. We've been seeing now with the uptick of the COVID-19 vaccines, where people are calling and telling individuals they were doing this prior to the vaccine rolling out. It actually happened in our state. I got the phone call where a man said that his, someone called him and his wife and offered them first their name to get on the list first for the vaccine. You can't get on a list, put your name on a list and get the vaccine. You have to actually go through the proper channels in order to, to get the vaccine. So if someone gets a phone call, it's not the case. There is no cost for it. Um, there's nothing that they can purchase that's going to get rid of it other than going to get the vaccine. So just make sure that beneficiaries are aware of this. That these scams are going on, not just here, but they're going all around, all over the country. And so just look at some of the bullets that I have listed here. Um, you're not going to be solicited door to door to receive the vaccine. And if someone does come to their home to inquire about the vaccine or tell them that they can get the vaccine, or even the next slide, the genetic testing. Please tell them to give my office a call because that it is fraud. These things, they shouldn't be going door to door. Medicare isn't paying for all these different screenings and things like that. But an individual needs a screening, think that they have cancer or something hereditary, have them go to their physician to get that um, screening done so that we know that it's billed properly and that it is going to get paid in most cases. But that genetic testing was a big issue um, prior to COVID. We had seen a lot of that going on. They go into senior high rises and go door to door or offer them some little gift in order to do genetic testing and, and get their Medicare information for all of this stuff. So that too is a fraud and we see um, the one of the third bullet, don't give out your personal information or accept screening services from anyone, especially at these health fairs. If they say that the screening is free, it should be free. You should not have to offer your uh, Medicare card in order to get that free screening. And if they need any type of assistance, as I mentioned, they're more than local more than welcome to call our office, the Department on Aging, or you can call your local SMP, your um, Senior Medicare Patrol, and they're located in um, the Waccamaw Council of Gov Governments at, right there in Georgetown. And if you need a phone number, we'll be glad to provide you with that one as well. So I have come to the end of my presentation. 
And if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to take them. That is a phone number or 800 number to our office that can you can reach us all over the state or actually from anywhere. And the next number is actually the, the, uh, my personal desk number. If you have any questions about presentation or you have any questions about Medicare in general or need any type of assistance, we'll be glad to help you. Thank you, Crystal. We do have a couple of questions. Absolutely. I'm going to see if I can end my slideshow and stop sharing my screen. All right. Yay. Did it. Yay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the first one, and I think you answered it, but she may need some more information, is <laughs> will the gap go away this year? The gap as far as the prescription drug plan, I guess that's what they mean. And the answer is no. It will close, but it's not going to go away. Okay, good. And the other one, if she did not do so at age 55, can my spouse enroll in Part D when I retire? At age 65, maybe? Must be 65. He put 55, but it, it must be 65. 65. If, if, the, if she was covered or is still covered under your group policy and has been with no breaks in coverage at that time, then yes. And if you need more clarification, you're more than get, welcome to give me a call and we can go through that. But if they were covered the whole entire time under your group plan and that where you work had at least 20 employees on that group policy, then she should be able to get Part D with no penalty. Okay, I have a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. On the Part D prescription plans, do you, I mean, I, every time I go in, I have to put what county I live in. Is it specific to counties or is it just for the state or what? No, it's specific to counties because not every plan covers every county. Got it. Okay. Um, another question. I am 69, have not signed up for Medicare because I'm still working full time and have health insurance. Will I be penalized when I enroll? No, um, as long as you have the health insurance, as I mentioned, you won't be penalized, but you can still enroll in Part A now. They encourage you to do Part A because it's premium free. And let's just say, unfortunately, if you're hospitalized at any given point and you have to come out of pocket with your own insurance, there may be something that Medicare can pick up for you. Most cases not, but it, sometimes it is. But if, as long as you have premium free Medicare, you can enroll in Part A at any given time that you want to. Good deal. Okay. Um, is Part A free or is it $258? And they say, thanks much. <laughs> Part A, as I mentioned, is free as long as you have a work history built up into the Social Security Administration. And if you contact Social Security or even go on to sign yourself up on socialsecurity.gov and get your own account, you can tell whether or not you have to pay for it. It'll tell you. But I as suppose. long as you have work history, then you should not. You guys should all know, I just went through this. This is why we're doing the um, Medicare thing today with Crystal is because going through this, I had to figure out so many things. And so we thought, well, this would make a really good webinar to let people know about what more about Medicare. So um, Laura says, can you share the phone numbers again, please? Yes, I'll just call them out to you. Our toll free number is 800-868-9095. And my direct phone number is area code 803 734 9889. Good deal. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Because I've, I've, I've really gotten a lot of information out of this. Okay. No more questions? No more? Okay. Well, Crystal, we want to thank you for coming on with us today. It has been a pleasure, and you have indeed answered a whole lot of questions, I think. Thank you. So um, we appreciate that very, very much. Thank you for the opportunity. We appreciate you. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Maybe I got something else up. I did. Okay. 
know some people say thank you wonderful presentation and thanks crystal this was very helpful and it was so thank you thanks guys thanks for coming we appreciate it and um just keep looking for things coming up with um the georgetown county chamber i do want to say one thing if you will go to our facebook page you can see on there that you can vote for Polly's island to be um, for Garden and Gun, the small beach town and Southern small beach town. We have gotten to the, I guess the quarterfinals. There are four of us left and we're going up against, who is it, Jekyll Island, isn't it, Jules? Yes. Yes. So please, please, please go on there and vote. Just go to um, the Georgetown County Chamber of Commerce Facebook page and it's tagged right up there. You too, Crystal, go vote. Okay. I just want to let everybody want to let everybody know that this presentation was also recorded and it was on uh, Facebook Live. So please visit our Facebook page if you'd like to re-watch the presentation. Good deal. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Everybody have a great day.